There are many languages in the Dune universe which have been featured in Denis Villeneuve's Dune movies that were inspired by the writer of the Dune saga, Frank Herbert. This is an exploration that I've been waiting to do for a very long time because I wanted to see the complete vision of how these languages would be portrayed in Denis Villeneuve's complete adaptation of Dune. The main language which is spoken throughout the Dune movies is called Galak, which was the official language of the Imperium, and by far the most widely spoken language in the known universe. Galak is essentially English, but the name of the language evokes the Gaelic language, a group of Celtic languages, particularly the Celtic language of Scotland, and the associated culture. This is partly why the bagpipes in Dune Part 1 seems so fitting, and the bagpipes dated back even further in time in Earth's history. So what's key here is bringing back the ancient ways and putting them into use in the future. That includes languages, fiefs and emperors. So the Dune movies have done well so far. In the Dune universe, Galak originated primarily from English and various Slavic tongues, along with numerous other ancient English languages. And it borrows from those languages, much like English borrows from other languages, such as Arabic, French and Latin. Frank Herbert is said to have described Galak as primarily an Anglo-Slavic hybrid. The written form of Galak is seen on their tombstones and rings, and it's a nice looking language aesthetically, thanks to Dune's art department. The second most common language used in the Dune movies, and perhaps the most important, is the Fremen language Shakopsa. Dune Part 1 featured little of it, but it was used more prominently in Dune Part 2. In the Dune universe, Shakopsa is a secret hunting language, which came from the Botani, also known as the Botani Jib, a long forgotten dialect which Shakopsa evolved from. Shakopsa was a real life secret language, used by medieval Chechen knights and princes. The name is actually derived from another Caucasian language, and the words Shakopsa means the language of hunters, and it is described as a hunting language in Leslie Blanche's Sabres of Paradise, a biography of the Muslim leader Imam Shamil, the Lion of Dagestan, and it tells the story of the Russian-Chechen conflicts of the 19th century. It's a thoroughly researched account which traces Shamil's descendants to Turkey and Egypt, countries which also reflect the influences of the languages in Dune. The real Shakobza language is so secretive that little of it is actually known, but the primary language the Shakobza in Dune is based on is Arabic, with some specific Romani used, also known as Romans or Romani Chib, Chib like Jib in Botani Jib. The Atreides equivalent of a hunting language would probably be their battle language, which is used specifically for military purposes. Different houses and groups like the Bene Gesserit had their own battle languages, which are communications that cannot be intercepted or interpreted by enemies. One example of battle languages in the Dune movies is the sign language we see Jessica and the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim use, when Jessica warns the Atreides guards that there could be danger, and when Mohayim advises the Emperor that the truth is being spoken. Sign language is beautiful, and this was a brilliant way of communicating important information without saying audible words. But there was another form of body language seen at the end of Dune Part 2, when we hear Jessica and Mohayim speaking to each other without moving their lips. This is not telepathy as such, it's the training of the Bene Gesserit female order on the reading of body language and facial expressions, which enables them to communicate without speaking. This is also in a biological sense, with the use of pheromones, etc. Something which makes the Bene Gesserit a fascinating group. And adding to body language, we had the Harkonnen Death Trooper in Dune Part 1, who had the ability to lip-read. The sign language system in the Dune movies was actually created by David J. Peterson, the language creator of Game of Thrones, where he created several hand gesture phrases, some of which never made it into the theatrical cut, but I commend him for his sign language work. I think of the verbal and written languages that he portrayed in Game of Thrones as elegantly functional languages, with his High Valyrian and even the harsher Dothraki language. For the Dune movies, Peterson created four languages. The rest were created by the art department. One of the most striking and memorable languages that comes from the Dune movies is the Sardaukar language. Who can forget that Sardaukar priest on top of the pulpit? But it appears that this language isn't a Peterson creation. In fact, he seemed unhappy with what transpired in the Dune movies and he found out when he literally heard the first opening sounds of the Dune movie. 
In a Reddit AMA, Peterson answered several questions, and on the Sardaukar language he said, hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure they're speaking English, modified heavily by the sound crew. He was then asked if he knew in advance if they were going to use that language at the beginning of the movie, and he confirms that that's exactly when he found out, for the opening of Dune Part 1. When asked how it made him feel, he said, he's been dealing with this for 12 years, and that rarely any of this goes exactly as he wants. So it's clearly not something that he was necessarily pleased with in the movie. I can see why. You describe the language to him, even though it's not something he created or developed. And it's probably quite embarrassing that it's arguably one of the most memorable parts of the Dune movies. In the AMA, he also talked about his thoughts on the Fremen language, Shakopsa, in the Dune books. And the answers were pretty surprising to say the least. When asked about the Arabic in the Dune books, Peterson said, the Arabic language is used in, being honest, rather unrealistic and at least semi-problematic ways. And when asked about the Islamic-related vocabulary, he said that its inclusion in the Dune books is not something that he would have recommended to the author. What we can surmise from this statement is that Peterson is probably referring to the word jihad with the fanatical Fremen, and perhaps Peterson is aware that painting fanatical legions as Islamic is problematic. But I think that's often a misunderstood connection, and that's a debate for another day. When asked about the niche Caucasian linguistics and Shakobsa being portrayed on screen, Peterson said, I'm afraid there's nothing of the Caucasus in Dune. My guess is Frank Herbert had absolutely no idea that Shakobsa was used for a Caucasian language, or if he did, he just wanted the name, not the linguistic background, which is clearly all Arabic. I think the notion that Frank Herbert had absolutely no idea that Shakobsa was a Caucasian language is kind of ludicrous and almost disrespectful to the author. I'm sure Frank Herbert knew exactly where it came from, because he was incredibly well read and spent several years researching for the Dune novels. Because the real world Shakobsa is such a secretive language, it would have been impossible to include an actual language for Shakobsa in the novels themselves. And because of Imam Shemil's links to Islam, he chose the most prominent language in that religion, which is Arabic, to be the language which Shakobsa is primarily based on. It's a very plausible, realistic step to take. When he was asked about the languages in Dune, and that Dune is set more than 20,000 years into the future, Peterson said that the time depth of the Dune books makes the amount of recognisable Arabic that survived completely, and I mean completely, impossible. Utterly. Since that was the case, I was left to simply accept that fact and move on in the direction I thought made the most sense. My hope is that the direction I took will prove satisfactory. He hoped it would prove satisfactory, but I don't think it was the right approach. I was incredibly disappointed when Long Live the Fighters appeared in the trailer, in an unrecognisable language from the books. We had been waiting decades for these words to finally be spoken, only for them to be delivered in gibberish. I would have much preferred the phrase to be delivered in English or the in-universe language of Galak. And apparently some of the phrases spoken in the film are not even really what Peterson intended anyway. It seems like some of the language is wrongly pronounced in the film. Come on, brother, it's a fake language. <laughs> All of these efforts to create an entirely new language, rather than use Arabic as the main basis for Shakobsa, using under the Sia Santa or whatever it is, instead of Ya Haya Shuhada, like Frank Herbert intended in his Dune book, is clearly erasure, a real world phrase of freedom Algerians fought and died for. You'd think a French-Canadian filmmaker like Denis Villeneuve would be more sensitive towards such a phrase, unless he doesn't care at all about the core subject material or history, but rather picking and choosing broad stroke themes while ignoring their historical links. That may be how it comes across to some at least. So some of these assumptions made about Frank Herbert I don't think are necessarily true, and I think Herbert deserved a little more credit than he was given. But Peterson acknowledges the linguistic background for Frank Herbert's Shakobsa is all Arabic. So why wasn't that the language used in the film? I guess having A-list actors like Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet speaking Arabic was perhaps too triggering for some people in Hollywood, and the filmmakers themselves didn't want to go there, which is evidence of a much bigger problem. I just feel like this method and approach only further adds to those voices that wish to deny the importance and even, in some cases, the presence of Arabic in Frank Herbert's Dune. It strengthens and emboldens them, whereas if they simply used more Arabic in Dune, it would have helped put those arguments to bed. 
If it were to be said that Hebrew, for example, was problematic, the reactions would have perhaps been much more different, and rightly so. Both Arabic and Hebrew are Semitic languages, therefore the reactions should be the same. Both have a place in Frank Herbert's future. And some saw the chant of the Sadakar as being very similar to the Mongolian chants. There were some voices that said that this was problematic too, but what that does is actually give a very ancient feel to the Sadakar, which is exactly in keeping with Frank Herbert's tune. Bringing those old ways and methods back into practice from the past and taking them even further into the future. Honestly, I find Peterson's neo shakobsa as a written language to be far too busy and overly complex, which doesn't seem to be a language that the Fremen would ever use with a great part of their culture focusing on practicality, simplicity, and using only what is needed like the attitude of the knife, chopping off what's incomplete and saying, now it's complete because it's ended here. Peterson's neo chakobsa feels disjointed, clunky, and nowhere near as beautiful as something like Elvish or indeed Arabic itself, which Shakobsa should have been based on. Even the sounds are nothing like the beauty that the Arabic language has to offer. So I will never like the look or language that Peterson created simply because of its purpose and function in the movie, to replace what shouldn't have been replaced, and because of its connotations of erasure. But I have to give credit to the dialect coach, Fabian, for making the neo shakobsa language seem natural to the actors and credit to the actors in their seamless delivery of it. It's just a shame that they had to go to extremes to learn a language that doesn't exist, perhaps due to some kind of fear in Hollywood, and it's a language they'll almost never use again. But if Fabian was responsible for the Arabic elements, they should have been handled better. But perhaps he was only going by the standard Peterson set, who was going by the standards the Dune filmmakers like Villeneuve set, who was going by the parameters the studio set. So these issues may well come from the top, and things get considerably worse further up the so-called chain of command. Unfortunately, Zendaya's pronunciation of the Arabic terms sounds a little more like a tourist on Arrakis rather than a native of Arrakis. They should have gotten a language coach who is able to pronounce Arabic. But can we blame Peterson himself or the production team for not taking enough delicate care to ensure that the Dune terms were honoured, respected and pronounced correctly? Seech instead of CH, Charney instead of Cheney. They did pick and choose to pronounce things as they liked, disregarding the way Frank Herbert did. You can check out my whole series on that. But to be fair, some of the changes are better than the original ways. But all the real world languages should have been pronounced properly. How could those languages and pronunciations survive in the year 10191? And how could Arabic survive in the future? It's simple. Other memory. In the case of the Bene Gesserit, an ancient language long since forgotten by any living peoples would often be drawn from other memory, where the Bene Gesserit commune with the ancestral memories within. The idea is that we carry all this knowledge and these memories within our genetic makeup. So the knowledge can be manifested and conjured up through those memories, thus used by the Bene Gesserit for the ultimate betterment of humanity. I understand that Peterson is approaching this from a purely technical, realistic, ordinary perspective, but I think that's the problem. Dune is a book with space witches who can commune with their female ancestors. There's nothing ordinary about that. And it seems like a core principle of the Dune books has been lost on them. The Shakobsa language should have simply been Arabic, with foreign words incorporated into the language from Romani and Spanish, which are also used by the Fremen. But using Arabic for a group of desert dwellers is not something that the Dune production probably wanted to be involved in. Simply put, they weren't brave enough. Perhaps they didn't have confidence in us, the moviegoers, to make that decision for ourselves. But it shows again that Hollywood is still afraid to represent Arabic on screen. There's a strange xenophobic undertone to it. They were happy to use Arabs as extras to use the land of Jordan for the great blockbuster, benefiting from their beautiful vistas, but they weren't happy to include their language in the film. There is a phrase that Zendaya Ashani says, whereby if someone is mad they say you are drinking sand, which is something you would never do. And that was really clever, but it would have been more fitting if that was said in Arabic, because that's where that kind of clever poetical play on words comes from. The phrase in Arabic would have been something like, Zendaya's poor pronunciation of Lisan al Ghaib, to her credit, is not her fault at all. Peterson was the one who actually incorporated that poor pronunciation into the Fremen language from the beginning. Lisan al Ghaib. So if there's anyone to blame, it's not Zendaya, it's Peterson. 
If the Fremen language had no links to real-world languages, and Peterson created this language as he did for the film, then I'd say the language worked well and it was fine. I still think his language work in Game of Thrones was much better, and I think the language the films will most notably be remembered for is the Sardaukar language from part 1, particularly the chant of the Sardaukar priest, even though Peterson didn't create the chant himself. It doesn't seem like they cared much on getting the Arabic right in Dune, or even using those terms at all, removing words like Jihad in Dune, which was originally in the Dune script, and was changed to Crusade, then to Holy War. At least the 1984 Dune, directed by David Lynch, didn't shy away from words like Jihad, etc. And the TV series kept a considerable amount of coherent Arabic phrases in the story, to their credit. Frank Herbert chose to bring the Arabic language through his world building into the future, the movies chose to leave it behind, apart from one or two words they simply couldn't avoid to include. Otherwise it wouldn't even be recognisable as a Dune adaptation without Mehdi, Risen al Ghaib, and Usul. Would it even be Dune if all those Arabic words were removed? Without them it probably wouldn't be distinguishable from many other science fiction films out there. Other languages in the Dune movie were utilised, such as Mandarin. Denis Villeneuve and his team capitalised on the casting of Chan Cheng as Dr. Yui for the East Asian community. But I never in a million years expected to hear fluent Chinese in a Dune movie, and not hear fluent Arabic in one. He's amazing. You. Instead getting a fake created language for the Fremen. I'm not sure if Peterson was partly responsible for the inclusion of the Mandarin language or not, but it seems to conflict with what was previously said about language survival, according to him. Of course there are many that won't see these things as important, but they are more important than you might think. If the Dune filmmakers took some liberties with the languages they portrayed in the film, such as the Sardaukar language, then perhaps this was out of Peterson's hands. If the language was based on Japanese or Native American dialects, they would have taken a delicate care to do things properly. Look at how much attention to detail and respect for the language and culture in the Shogun series was given. Denis Villeneuve's track record with Arabic isn't the best either. He completely erased the Arabic subtext in Blade Runner 2049, which was created by Vangelis in Blade Runner, using vocals by Greek-Egyptian Demi Roussos. This is probably why Villeneuve had such a hard time with the Blade Runner soundtrack, rejecting Johan Johansson's score and replacing him with Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Wolfish. So I had little confidence in Denis Villeneuve tackling that element of the Dune story. And sadly, those sentiments were justified, because words like Jihad and other Arabic words were essentially erased. But Mandarin isn't the only modern language that made its way into Dune. It sounds like this Sardaukar is saying, which is a French swear word. But Denis wanted even more than that. He wanted to please the people of Montreal, where Villeneuve is from, but he wasn't able to do so. He was convinced that if I was able to put the word tabarnak in one of the movies, it would please the people from Montreal. But I asked Josh Brolin to, to use the word at one point, and it didn't work out. It's a, it's a thousand, it doesn't play well in the mouth of an American. So I sorry, I failed, I failed. This French word would have definitely been in the Dune movies if Josh Brolin pronounced it well enough. The only reason it wasn't was because it didn't sound right coming from an American. Frank Herbert loved languages. He always tried to pronounce the words of different languages in the authentic way, whether it be French, Spanish or even dead languages such as Ancient Egyptian. When looking at Dune pronunciation suggestions from Frank Herbert, most of them are indeed accurate, but when it comes to the Arabic pronunciations, which can be trickier for Americans, Herbert suggested simply what he thought the pronunciations were to the best of his ability. He would have absolutely accepted the more accurate, authentic pronunciations, unless a change was specifically linked to some canon in the story, which it rarely is. Frank Herbert did say to pronounce the terms as you like, and I think that is more because he knew that there were better ways of pronouncing some of the suggestions he offered of terms that he borrowed from in Dune, such as the Arabic ones. That is why in my How to Pronounce Dune Words series, I show how Frank Herbert pronounced the words himself and offer some alternatives or true origins of those words with how they sound in the hopes of offering you a way to make Dune a more authentic experience. So with the greatest respect to Peterson, I don't think the neo shakopsa in the Dune movies did Frank Herbert's work justice with the languages he intended. I believe the work he did for the neo shakopsa language in the movie was overkill. He even incorporated the wrong pronunciation of Arabic words in the actual Fremen language, so I cannot say he honoured the Arabic elements he used in the film either. 
And with his attitudes to language in terms of Dune, not only does it insinuate that females cannot teach languages like Arabic through their genetic memories, but that the Arabic language cannot survive in the future, while other languages like Chinese clearly can. At least in Denis Villeneuve's Dune movies. It does come across as Arabic erasure, whether intentional or not, simply by default due to the nature of their job, which is to create an entirely fake language which essentially replaces another. And I wish the cast would have fought for Arabic more. Maybe they did behind the scenes. So some of these accusations of Arab erasure in Denis Villeneuve's Dune movies do seem to have some validity to them. At least it appears that way on the surface. If you like the new language that Peterson created, that's fine. But I think it has repercussions for the future of the Dune franchise, which will likely continue this tradition of erasure, using Peterson's neo shakobsa as the standard to go by for all future Dune projects to come. I'm sure there's a whole debate to be had about whether using Arabic would have been a good idea considering what transpires with the Fremen, but I think if portrayed right, it would have been fair and it would allow audiences to decide for themselves. Moving forward with Dune, if it is to ever become a TV series in the future adapted by others, it should not take the attitudes of the creators behind the Dune movie's languages of the Fremen as an example. Peterson is talking from a perspective based in reality, not based in the Dune universe, which would allow these languages to be retaught and relearned by the Bene Gesserit. Shakobsa should be a language firmly based and rooted in Arabic, with additions of all the other phrases used as they were, such as the Roman Gypsy in some elements of the ceremonies, which were all there for a reason. It's not for us to change them, just to have it suit our whims and desires. Frank Herbert knew what he was doing when he put them in the book, and I think it is not for us to decide to radically change and exclude a language. So I have to say the Shakobsa of the Dune movies disregards Frank Herbert's legacy quite a bit and is almost a kind of insult to his work and the love he had for the Arabic language and other languages like Romani Gypsy. Most have said that they couldn't even tell whether the neo Shakobsa in the Dune movies was Arabic or not and they assumed it was, so they may as well have used Arabic. It seems that bringing Peterson in to create this language was overkill. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Check out some of my other Dune content or some of my other popular culture videos here.